Hi, this is Dina Jacob here, co-founder and CFO at Open Financial Technologies from the third edition of Business World FinTech Festival right here in Bangalore. And this is the most exciting time. See, the times are so exciting for FinTech in India, especially starting with right with the payments to the kind of stack we have built. The entire world is looking to what India is doing and what India is up to. And that's where the entire fintech part and the fintech ecosystem has become extremely interesting now, right from the payments through around 2015, the entire lending tech which started off the whole uh, revolution. And today, as we see, right from open banking, though it is not like formally uh, out there in the market, but this is something for, with the entire digitization, we are seeing a huge wave happening in the fintech in India right from wealth management to sector specific uh, company, I mean, fintechs coming in and collaborating very, very effectively with incumbents. It's a very, very different and a unique model which is panning out. Touching the kind of population we have, the kind of variety of geography we have, the kind of variety of inclusion we need to do for India. I don't think any other country has achieved this level of feat that we are talking about. And coming from where we stand, we, we, have, uh, we have a platform which enables SMEs to do business. So it is a business operating system, system so to speak, starting with payments and banking as the core of it. And layering on the uh, banking payments, compliance and accounting all on the same platform. And then embedding all of these into large ecosystems and distributing through multiple channels, including banks. We today have about 35 lakh SMEs that we power with our platform, covering about 80% of the PIN codes of India, which is where it's not about tier one or tier two or the key, op uh, key top cities, but our users are spread across the length and breadth of India, ensuring financial inclusion, credit to new to, uh, new to uh, credit customers, all of these are possible only with the power of technology combined with the will of the government and will of the central uh, bank and, and with the collaboration of the traditional banks. That's where the power of fintech in nation building is happening today. And that's where we we are very proud to see the variety of um, companies who are a part of, uh, part of the fintech festival today. The relevance of the topics that have been picked and very exciting conversations around the future of fintech, particularly in India. Thank you. Uh, Ma'am, well, what do you think are the, you know, if there are any gaps in the industry at this point in time and that should be addressed sooner or later? So from a gaps perspective today, if I were to look at it, the infrastructure is getting matured for digitization. One, the basic fundamental thing that was required for the internet penetration, that has happened to a very good extent. And now the entire banking and the financial infrastructure has to be a lot more modernized, I would say. That's where our uh, path towards an open banking, where the data can be consumed from different places, the regulations around it, which we are seeing a good change happening as we speak. But at the same time, these are some of the areas which will have to be propelled and accelerated to get to the right goals. Uh, uh, what, what would you say are your revenue targets for FI24 uh, or your future plans for the company or for its growth uh, in, in, in this financial year? So in fact, you know, as a platform, as a company, as we stand, the next focus is definitely on the scale in India because now we have a amazing platform which is loved by the customers and different parts of it right from a GST based invoices to invoicing EV uh, bills right from you know payments of the taxes to entire payments uh, so the in incoming and the outgoing payments which are done by the vendors I mean by the uh, merchants including reconciliations which has been traditionally a huge pain point all of that is consolidated we were able to solve on the platform and currently we are in a scale-up mode right now right from the revenue streams as well so next 24 months if you look at it the key areas would be scaling up our uh, lending which also on the back of huge data uh, very strong data science yet at the same time also looking at uh, connecting the right user to the right lender for that matter we are not like a, we, we are not in the business of lending ourselves but at the same time the gap that exists also is that 
are you going to the right lender for your sector, for your profile, for your kind of requirement? And, and are there products enough which are being crafted for the use? So this is one area we are focusing on. The second as a platform, the end-to-end -end part of running a business, a single sign-on, once you come onto the platform, you don't have to go anywhere. The banks connect back into the system. External other systems, including where you do your business, right from you know the platforms which you are on, which connects back the reselling platforms which are on, which connects back the data, reconciles for you. And even for that matter, the money flow you can enable. Or to the extent wherein other accounting systems that connects back into the central system. So which means you don't have to go to 10 different interfaces and service providers to get your day-to-day -day business done. And in one single interface, a business owner will be in a position to understand what's happening to his business on a day-to-day -day basis and take it ahead from there. So that's, and with, with very intelligent insights and dashboard. And that's where right from records, decision making, committing data to, uh, to government, which is where the compliance comes into picture, effectively interacting both with your vendors and your customers, and then understanding what effective decisions have to be taken, which is data backed. That's what we are focusing on for the next 24 months.